Welcome to the Waterfowl Den. My name is R.D. Reynolds, and I want to welcome you to the YouTube Live and the podcast. So if you streaming this on any of the streaming apps, uh, go check out R.D. Reynolds Outdoors on YouTube. And if you're watching this on YouTube, go subscribe to R.D. Reynolds Outdoor on any place that you stream podcasts. Today, our episode is brought to you by Matthew Knight with Satura Investors out of Charlotte. There's the information. Uh, the link to his website is scrolling across the, the banner down at the bottom, and it's also in the description. Today's episode is about helping business owners and working professionals like you who share a passion for the outdoors, shooting sports, zeroing them in to their long-term financial goals. So if you need any information or contact or any other questions, contact Matthew. Also go check out Salt Creek Ammo. This triple curl TSS is some of the best TSS I have ever shot. This is for waterfowl edition. It's made for waterfowl. So if you're going to shoot a, a species that you've been chasing for a long time, don't use no cheap ammo. You pay good money to go on a trip. You got great guns. Don't, don't cheap out on cheap ammunition. This TSS is amazing. It's got number sevens, number eights, and he has number nines. So go check out saltcreekammo.com. Here you will find any kind of ammo you're looking for. He has custom loads, TSS in 10 gauge, 12 gauge, 20 gauge, low pressure ammunition. You got predator ammunition, turkey ammunition, anything you're looking for, give Keith a call. Tell him what you're looking for. He can load it however you want it. You want a blend? He can do it. You want Bisma? That's what I just ordered. I ordered some number four Bisma and two and three quarter amazing shells. So give him a call. Also, new to the channel, Kicks Industries, most people would know them as Kick Choats, has partnered up with the channel. I am doing a series right now on Kicks Buck Chokes. I got a ton of ammunition shotgun shells that I am testing from two inch, three inch, three and a half, uh, different brands of ammunition, different chokes out of different guns. Go, so go check that out. There's other choke related episodes also on the channel, but I appreciate y'all tuning in. And today let's get started. Welcome back, y'all. So today, I got Ryan and Christian on the phone here on the video. They are with Pattern Pros, and I was got my magazine of Ducks Unlimited in probably I don't know three weeks ago, and I'm scrolling through the pages, and I see this up and coming company, and I'm like, "What in the world is this?" I get on the internet, and I'm like. Man, I wish I would have known about this a year and a half ago. So we're going to talk about who they are, what they are offering. And I'm telling you, after you hear what they got to say, y'all all going to be like, man, I wish I would have thought of this. And you really need to check them out because if you follow my channel, I have shot plenty of ammunition and there is some crappy ammunition on the market and I've shot it before. But this right here is game changer so so who is the pattern pros who which one y'all want to go first ryan go ahead <clears throat> hey ryan burnett uh eight years in the marine corps and uh just one of the the co-founders uh of this uh special group of me christian and uh another buddy who uh is a loser and has to be at work tonight <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm Christian Santiago. I uh, served eight and a half years, eight years in the Marine Corps. Um, and us three, we got together on, <clears throat> you know, 
we were all stationed kind of the same place. And uh, one thing that's cool about, you know, being in the military, you can connect on that kind of wavelength, but being a hunter as well, that's a whole different wavelength. So we got together, started hunting together. And then um, I believe uh, Ryan and our, the other co-owner kind of was like, man, we need to get, we need to get better about figuring out what, what shell she's best for our weapons. Cause we needed it. You know, Ryan, I, even though I really do enjoy watching him chase cripples, um, would much, <laughs> much, rather, much rather have uh, more, more ducks in our bag at the end of the day. So they kind of got together and said, you know, we need to create this box. We just need to go ahead and do it. Uh, we all three got together, figured out a way to, to build a box and work with, our parameters <laughs> and here we are with foreign pattern pros. So I, I I've said on my channel plenty of times, you need to get your shotgun out, try what shell and what choke fits your gun. Because even though the reason I started my channel was I was trying to find ammo that fit my gun. And I was like, well, if I'm wasting money shooting shells, Maybe somebody ought to get a kick out of it watching it on YouTube. And yeah. that's basically how it started. Now it's involved in many other things like this, this podcast and YouTube live. So the, the company y'all started are, is offering shotgun shells, brand name, good quality shells all in a bundle. So let's talk about it. Instead of, I go out and buy one box, usually other than Boss, which is a 20 in a shell. Most boxes are 25 to a shell. And if I go and buy a box, let's just say average costs 35. I'm sure y'all probably got the math on that. But average cost is anywhere between 30 and $50 for a box. Yep. I get one shell and I shoot it out of it and it's junk. Yep. Well, is it always junk or is it just my gun? It could be the combination of my choke mm -hmm. but that could be one box that's gonna maybe sit on the shelf that i never shoot again mm -hmm. and and y'all came up with a uh, a design to limit that so let's talk about it so what'd you come up with so we took uh several poles and figured out you know everyone's favorite ammo and then different sh different shot sizes so what we did was we took eight different types of shell and put three of those each into a single box, giving you 24 shells. And so like for patterning pack one, we'll have those eight brands and then we'll have, we have shot size two and then shot size three. And then we have patterning pack two, which has another eight different types of shell. Again, with shot size two and shot size three, but those are for both for 20 or for 12 gauge. Uh, and then we just have one, one pack right now for 20 gauge and we're working uh, to put together a, a second box to give you uh, an, an additional eight different brands um, of, of 20 gauge. And so what that allows you to actually do is without buying $250, $300 worth of ammo after shipping, you get to buy those 24 shells and go pattern them with our, we have the, the targets as well. So you actually get to see it on paper. And at the end of the day, you know what is actually going to pattern out of your gun. So people will spend thousands of dollars on boats. They'll spend a thousand dollars for waders and a thousand dollars on, on a, a shotgun. And they do all of these things, but not actually have an idea of how their gun's going to shoot. Yeah. And nowadays with so many different, types of guns, so many different types of shells, so many different types of choke, the results, the possibilities are just about limitless. And we're really trying to, to change that. And unfortunately, waterfowlers, for whatever reason, don't, for the most part, don't go pattern their, their gun. Um, and I, I'm not sure if it's just, they just, it, it's, they don't know. Uh, it's too expensive, which is probably the, the biggest thing. Because if it, if it was if it was you know five dollars a box, it would it'd be nothing to go buy five different boxes of shell and actually you know I'll go shoot these and if only one of them shoots you know shoots good then all right no big deal. But like RD just said, especially after shipping, you know it may be only twenty eight dollars for a box, but then you're spending 
another eight dollars in shipping ten dollars in shipping whatever it's going to be it gets expensive real quick so we've made it to where you can shoot eight different types of shell and get a set of targets and it's going to be less than a hundred dollars after after shipping which is something that you can't do for any other way right and and, and that's exactly what you said because say let's just say a particular brand let's just say i'm wanting to test brand a well i start searching websites for brand a well this company might have it in two and three quarters but they might not have it in three inch so now i gotta go look at another company another store they got three inch so now i'm having to pay two shipping prices and i promise you they're gonna get that shipping price yeah so and i've said it a dozen times on my videos just because if all three of us is shooting a browning and they're all mods your mod ain't the same mod as mine no. they measure completely different and i think people with shotguns don't understand that and i i stress that all the time just because ryan is killing birds and i look at him and i'm like hey man what you using i'm using a mod well if he's using a benelli and i'm using a, a, a browning them mods don't equal up and i think that takes a, a bad rap also because you know people just say just get you a mod and go out there and they never test it uh -huh. and yep. i found that to be true for sure yeah and and i can pull up the website and we could talk about the brands and stuff in in a in a, in a minute but well, well also, i think that's awesome what y'all did also too it's just about uh <clears throat> one of the things there's so many if if you really talk we've gotten ex these deep conversations about it um especially being in the blind and there's so much thing there's so many things that tie to uh being successful out there on the hunt right there's there's the two the choke tube that you use the top shotgun that you use the top shells that you're shooting right that do make a difference um mm -hmm. and the only time they really see the difference is when you put it on paper now that's right i come i, I was raised in the south um and predominantly growing up i didn't duck hunt you know we rifle hunt but it was a standard practice that every single year before the season started we went out there and zeroed our weapons you know mm -hmm. and so i wondered myself why didn't we ever do this for shotguns and then you start realizing that you know <clears throat> Our other counterpart's got a great scenario of this because his Benelli um, Super Black Eagle shoots high for him. And, and, it, and, it, and it took him to put it on paper to realize, man, you know, if I <clears throat> if I had just been aiming at their feet, I'd be able to slap them in the lips, is what he likes to say. All this yep. time, instead of being able to miss those shots. And now, Ryan can contest to this um, out of the three of us. That kid don't miss his shot because <laughs> he figured out he figured out where his shot placement is. He we he got really familiar with how his weapon, each weapon system shoots, um, and what he's shooting out of his weapons. So now our hunts that went from you know all day, we'd go out there in the morning, wouldn't quite catch a bag, and then we'd come back out in the afternoon to catch a bag. Those hunts that went all day now end earlier in the morning. We got a little bit more time, right? We all have families, wife and kids, and I'm sure that uh, the duck hunting community can contest that. You know, certain people want us home more often. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so we got a little bit more time on the back end, which is something that we didn't even figure. We didn't even count in. So um, it was, uh, there's so many things that tie into just taking the time out to figure out how your weapon shoots um, and how it interacts with that shell, whether it's a nursery driven or a gas driven shotgun. Um, and then you'll see, you'll see some changes. You'll see some changes in your hunting. You'll see some changes in your life and relationships, and it's a it's, it was a cool experience to be able to figure it out for us. And it's just not you can have two Brownings right beside each other, and they're not the same. Literally, <laughs> I have shot a shell out of a choke, put one shell in, and it shoots high to the left, just a little bit high to the left, and literally just switch brands, and it'll go back center. Did anything on my gun change? Nope, the choke stayed the same. It's just that particular ammo in combination of a wad. You know, a lot of people don't talk about the wad either. Uh, wad, uh, buffering, uh, fillers, they all have something to do with that shell. And I say it all the time, and, and we'll say it a, probably a dozen times in here. Um, 
get out and pattern them sh shotguns. Yeah. You only get better yeah. with with doing it. Yeah. It really is pretty and, eye-opening. Once you put stuff on on paper, you'll actually see differences, even at, even at 20 yards. And you're like, oh, 20 yards is a chip shot. And for the most part, that's right in the dead center of the decoys. But – when you start to see holes or hey for whatever reason like i shoot that like you said this, this shoots high left or like i patterned my um i was getting ready for turkey season and I, I patterning started to be like that's really when we're starting to get going with stuff and so i started to hey, all right let's put some stuff on paper and even at 20 yards my 870 the ammo i was shooting shot several inches high to the point where i was like man if i had I had if I if a turkey came up at 15 yards and I aimed it for whatever I just aimed at his head and I get a chance to aim a little bit lower I'm gonna miss that bird and starting to see that the amount of different shells and each one of them is gonna interact different with your gun and choke is astonishing and it's it's been a cool experience to actually see it um, on paper like you see it in real time. And you, you may not get to see the, you know, the inertia or, or how it's actually going to, the power it's going to hit the ammo with, but you're at least going to have an idea, like, right? Hey, this is, this is going to pattern really good. So it's going to do two things for you. It's going to either let you know that the buying the $45 box shells is, is worth it. You're like, okay, like this, this, is, this is worth it. Or you can go pick up a $20 box and you go, you know what? That actually patterns better than that. That box of shells that is double the price. So you're, you're either going to save yourself money right there, or you're going to confirm that what you've been using it, or it, you can at least justify spending that kind of money. Cause it, yeah. it's gotten over the last five years, shotgun shells, especially waterfowl has just, the prices of it is just blown up. That and, you know, let's just go back a year, maybe a year and a half ago when COVID, man, you, you couldn't find any water shell, waterfowl shells. I mean, it was, it was down to the, I don't even shoot me personally. I don't shoot the cheap shells, but it got down to the, well, I might take the Walmart <laughs> brand steals. Whatever, of, you, uh, yeah, whatever you can get. Yeah, I mean, it, that's what it was. I mean, we could not, you could not find shells nowhere. Yeah. And it's just the same way, you know, people wait to the last minute for waterfowl season. They'll wait till Halloween. Well, I better go get my shells. Well, they're not there <laughs> because everybody else waited. Yeah. Yeah. And if you did find them, you, they were, they were super expensive. You know, they yeah. were outrageous. The box, you know, Kent Fastdale 2.0 may have cost you $25. Right now it costs $25 for a box of 25. But during COVID, it may have cost you $45. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was crazy. And 410 still ain't hardly came down. No. no. no, no. I mean, I mean it, it's like I mean it, it's like walking into a store and they have 410 ammo. I mean, it feels like uh the lost ark of gold or something. I mean, it's it's crazy. It yeah. used to be like ten dollars a box. Yeah, I don't know what. I mean, what are the people doing with the four tens? Because I don't, I, I, me personally, I don't know anybody who hunts with a four ten, waterfowl wise. I'm like, no. man, I'm trying to get, trying to let, get my kids to learn to shoot four tens, but my kid, just my, to... old, my oldest has a four ten. She's actually killed a couple ducks with it, um, yeah. but it's. I mean, it's a single shot, and she's only yeah. seven, so it's that bird's gonna it better land, and it better land. <laughs> Smack I, I know, in the middle. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know what um gun you got, but um my little my both of my kids got moss birds and they got the metal bead on the end. But if you look up the dead ringer sights, yep, it, it it makes where you can add a a big sight at the end and then you got the dot, and that really helped my kids learn to you know line up how how to aim because the shotgun ain't like a rifle and nope. and like you said they about got the land for my kids to be able to hit hit them my my eight-year-old shot his first dove this year with a 20 gauge 
Oh, and that's yeah. what he was using that that dead ringer. But you know, it's I'm hard not, to teach a kid. I've got a I actually have a cheap red dot um, on hers, yeah. and it it honestly is she she killed she killed a duck with it, and we went um, didn't get a chance to pull the trigger on turkey, um, but she I mean she shot a lot with it like in terms of uh, on paper, and. Uh, it was it, it actually was super easy for her to use. That that's that's cool. It may it makes it all worthwhile when your kids take something out, like a bird or you know, whatever. I mean, that's that's all I want to see this this year was uh my kids take out a, a, a dove. So we achieved that this year. Maybe we'll get a duck for them. Awesome. That's awesome. But I I'm gonna pull up the website here. So like I was telling Ryan, I mean, I just talked to y'all. Well, I just talked to Ryan probably two weeks ago when I was setting all this up and the website changed dramatically. So, I mean, it looks like y'all are been busy. I, that's all I can say. I, I can imagine on the back end starting a business and um, I don't know how y'all got in the Ducks Unlimited magazine, but whoever – Whoever came up with, hey, let's do an ad, or whoever found y'all out, you probably ought to give them a hug because I'm sure, I'm sure that was a, it was that simple. was something to be. It's really surprising how many I've never taken the time out to pattern, pattern their shotguns. I mean, well, you know, there's everyone's always heard about it. Hey, you know, go throw a couple shells in it before the season starts, make sure nothing happens. You know, everything goes okay. But when you talk in terms of Try to get a sixty forty, or try to get a a, a twenty eighty, or you know, <clears throat> split on on how many impacts you have on the on the target. You know, it matters, um, and people never considered that. And so we just all we all we really wanted to do was just start the conversation, because uh, the more familiarized that you are with your weapon system, um, you know, it better helps conservation, and it also right. awareness and safety, right? So. You know, I mean, there's been there's been plenty of times that you're hunting a lake and, it's, you know, let's say you're hunting public land and um, you've got hunters that may be sitting that come in a little after you did. They're sitting to the left front of you. Um, but knowing where your your shots are going uh, could be really important in that scenario. Uh, me and Ryan have a personal experience. We were hunting in California. And we're sitting on the other side of this pond. And uh, I don't know, Ryan, how many times did we get rained down on by pellets <laughs> just from the hunters across the way? Um, so it's just, you know, it's just that, that familiarity and we just wanted to start the conversation once we striked it or mentioned it to a couple people, they were like, Oh yeah, dude, this is great. And the ducks unlimited got a hold of it. Um, Delta waterfowl, Ryan started sparking conversations with Delta waterfowl. We got invited to a couple events. Um, it's been some positive traction for sure. It's been a fun I mean, When, when you can just go to one website and order a kit, and it comes with all the brands, big name brands in one size. Me personally, I like number fours. That's just what I like. Um, but if you could go to your website right there and just order a box that has nothing but number fours with all the brands, I mean that is a that is something big. And and what I've found is I see a lot of people too in waterfowl and even dove and clay pigeons. Um, I found that do pick a brand that works with your shotgun and don't change all the other brands. You know, you see it in the blind one day, they just run out of shells. They're shooting this brand. The next day they're shooting this brand. The next day they're shooting this one. Oh, I just ran out and shooting this cheap stuff. And that is not the way to be because every single one of them patterns different, but they're all feet per second different. So one yeah. day, you're leading you're leading the bird by two foot and the next day you're shooting steel and you're still leading them two foot well now you shot behind them or or something slower yeah. it's no consistency so y'all got a great product find the shell that patterns the best with your gun and then stick with that brand the whole season and see if your kills don't come up yeah, yeah. So our, our our two biggest things that are going to come out of this are one you're going to bring more home more birds because you're actually going to find a shell that is patterns good. You're like, hey, I'm I'm right where I need to be. 
you're going to spend less time looking for crippled birds. So ever, I guarantee you there's not a duck hunter alive who hasn't missed out on birds because they're out there chasing cripples mm-hmm. <laughs> or, 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 or they're, then they're using their dog and then their dogs are looking for it. And yeah. something I hadn't thought about until recently is hunting dogs, duck dogs die every single year because they are spending so much time, so much effort diving after birds that will, that are still plenty alive. Right. And I guarantee you, if you find the right shotgun, or the, the right shell, you pattern it, there's a, a chance, at, at, you know, it's small. There's a chance that your dog is, has a chance to be alive and compared to dead if you had used the, the proper ammunition. Um, that might be very, very small. But anybody who's got a dog knows that you're going to do whatever you can to keep that dog alive. That dog's part of the family. That's exactly um, right. So, and you know, other than when I started this YouTube channel, you know, I I was just shooting skeets, and I'd be like, "Hey, I'm just going to Walmart, and I pick up the gray Winchester box." Looking back, that was the wrong decision because you know, until you learn about shotgun shells, and and y'all might know it too, that lead, which lead is not legal in waterfowl. Let me specify yeah. that, but. Even with tungsten and bismuth and steel, there is a hardness of each one. And until a year ago, just looking at the lead, I didn't know that there was a 2%, a 6%, and then an 8% density of lead. So the whole time I'm buying, you know, just the cheap stuff at 2%, and now I learned that there's a, a 6% that hits harder than the 2%, and it only costs me a dollar more. So, you know, I'm, I, it, it's, I think it's anemonium or it's an A word, but in, in lead, the cheap box is 2%, the AA is a 6%, and if you get the AA uh, diamonds or something, it's 8%. And that literally means the higher the percentage, the harder it hits. The same way in waterfowl ammunition, the steel has a density. Bismuth's got different densities. So just because you're, you're cheaping out on a shell might be what you talked about earlier, cripples. You might be hitting them, but maybe if you spent $2 more, they might just be done with. And so that's our biggest long-term goal is – uh, I can't remember who it was. They did a, a study a few years back. Um, Delta Waterfowl. It was, was it Delta Waterfowl? 1.7 million ducks every yep. year on average are crippled and lost. If, let's just say, for on the, I think the low end, definitely the low end, 10%, we can reduce that by, by 10%. Uh, there's 170,000 ducks going back into the breeding population every single year. So one year, that may not be the biggest difference, but if you do that consistently, you know, let's just say for 10 years, that's a one point, that's back to 1.7 million ducks back into that population. Every year, that's just gonna compound. So we're always talking about, hey, duck numbers are down and, oh, this is this is down and I don't see the birds I used to. and. Like, well, I mean, I, I spend my money for Delta Waterfowl and Ducks Unlimited, which they do great things. But when it comes down to our, our turn to be actual conservationists, you don't do it. So you're just wasting ducks out there. And even if you take that into your, your bag limit, you're like, hey, I got, I, I got four, but I, and I, I, I lost two. All right, well, fair enough. Well, you took that into your bag limit. Well, that is still two ducks that are wasted that you didn't get a chance to bring home and and cook and eat. And if we can, I mean, really change the way people go about that, not only will our kids have ducks to hunt, they'll have more ducks to hunt than we do now. And all three of us have have young kids, all, all four of us, including you, R.D. And we want, in 20 years, we want them to have that opportunity to shoot more ducks. Like my kids killed two ducks now and both times it's just been like, 
it is so cool to watch to see the, the joy on her face. And it's like, I want that. I want that more. I want her to go out there and freaking limb it out. Mm-hmm. And the more ducks we put back into that population, the better chance that that is going to be a more common occurrence than it is now. Absolutely. I agree with you. Yep. So how long has, um, have y'all been around? So is this like the first year? We, or has yeah. it been really? Yeah. Yeah, we started this up in January. We didn't really get running until about March. Um, and, and even then, it was after that. Yeah, we didn't even publish the website until a little later. Um, There's a lot of, um, between Ryan and, and our other counterpart, there was a lot of uh, information that we needed to gather about the shells before we presented the product. We didn't want right. to- There's a lot of smoke and mirrors in marketing and boxing. And, right, right. You know. so buying and getting hold of the shells. And that was another thing that, contributed to what we chose in the box too is that we chose it we chose the manufacturers that were most readily available to the public uh, things that you could you could go to normally and, and, and pick but we also tried to include um, things that weren't so readily available you know for instance we 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 grouped together in Southern California which uh, if anybody has a chance to hunt out in Southern California it was, it was an awesome experience but um, you know Migra wasn't a very big product out there um, and then you come over to South Carolina, you may have the opportunity to buy it. So we wanted to be able to have that or have certain products in the box that, yeah, you can genuinely go to the store, you go to your Cabela's and you can pick, but also too, maybe you'll find it interesting as I've never even shot migra migrant ammunition. I wonder how that does. When I wonder how that interacts with my Mossberg 835 as compared to my, my, my Winchester. Right. Um, so we wanted to present that too. There's a lot of information, a lot of background noise <laughs> that we had to create to be able to find out what to put in these boxes. Um, and eventually, you know, as we do more studies and gather more data, um, we're gonna we're gonna offer m- different types of ammunitions and different different boxes. And then um, and then yeah, listen to the public. We kind of try to let the public decide what what they what to put in these boxes really between all the poles and stuff and man i'm telling you that's probably uh that that topic is probably like uh chokes you i you you see it every year what's the best chokes and man the comments just i mean just comments what's the best brand the comments 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 i see it every day on every (laughs) waterfowl page on facebook it is oh what's the best shell for this what's well do I do this? Do I do that? And I'm like, well, I guess what? If you just go to this one website, we can solve all of those problems real quick. Find out what you, you, you may go spend two hundred dollars on a motion duck, but you know, you're not you can't spend this money to actually figure out what's gonna what's gonna kill that bird when he when he does to decide to come in. I agree. And and I I said on uh, the beginning there there was two things I said at the beginning of the show during my preview you know people just like what you said people spend tons of money to go on a guided trip and then cheap out on shelves and then in that kick choke right now I'm doing a bunch of pattern testing on double op buck so <laughs> maybe in the future y'all might do buck shells too we'll talk about <laughs> what what y'all's future is but you know. I, there there has been some brands of double op book that i would hope to never have to use <laughs> for a deer like i'm telling you there was one particular brand and and it and it's scheduled it ain't came out on my on my youtube channel yet but there was one particular brand i would almost say that um i don't think ele- it would hit an elephant I mean, it was bad. <laughs> On a 30-inch circle, it put like two pellets in a 30-inch circle. I mean, it was like, Ooh. you you, yeah. you look at it and be like, now I know I didn't miss. Yeah. And you start <laughs> questioning yourself. And I'm like, well, maybe it was that choke. And then I go get another choke. Well, that ain't no better. And I go get that another ain't. choke. Well, that ain't even no better either. And it's <laughs> like, this is, this is just terrible. Like, and you, and you know, as soon as I posted one video of a terrible shell, people comment like, yeah, I wouldn't even give that to my enemies. And I'm like, man, I wish I would have known that before, you know, spending at least, at least right now, double lot book is cheaper than waterfowl because you're only buying like five at a time. But, you know, 
it's just like what we were saying with y'all. You know, you don't have to buy a whole box to say, okay, this don't work good on my gun. And you got a whole box sitting on a shelf somewhere that you're never going to shoot again. You can get one of y'all's boxes, put it in. Okay, well, it don't like this shell. Move on to the other brand that's in that box. And, and, yeah. and be like, you're not wasting a whole amount of money or time on so one particular you, brand. You bring yeah. up a, a, a great point where it's, like you're an experienced hunter, so you know you like you know that hey, I can I can change some stuff up. But you say somebody who's just getting really just getting started, and they they go out there. I mean, they they bought their decoys and they've they've got all their stuff, and you know they put their decoys out and they get birds to come in, and they're shooting and shooting and shooting, and they're like, oh, like I can't I can't hardly kill anything, and yeah. that's got to be very frustrating because they may not have a mentor there to tell them what what might be going wrong and they might be not doing a single thing wrong other than the fact that they haven't got the right ammunition but then That's they go right. it's frustrating because then they, well i gotta go spend i just bought a 400 hundred dollar shotgun and i just did this and then this and like if he's married then you know the wife's gonna be like well what are we what are we doing like you're spending all this money and then you're not coming home with anything and it's like what and but the, those questions don't get really get asked nearly as much. You bring home a strap full of ducks because they're like, "Oh wow, he was he was successful," and then you cook it for him. And like, I love to wrap my stuff in, in bacon. Um, and it, it's always delicious. I know some people kind of knock on it, and I'm like, "It's it doesn't ever let me down. It's always delicious." I I don't know what else to say about it. But you you, you do that, and the wife will ask less questions. But it's so, somebody who's doesn't know what they're doing that conversation is going to go a whole whole lot different if you're if you're getting up at four o'clock in the morning and coming home with nothing absolutely and just just like the book shells like i was saying you know that you go out there and and, and you got the same people in waterfowl that don't pattern their guns they go out there and they sitting out there and they shoot a shoot at a deer and they miss well i just I, i'm done with it or i'm done with waterfowl because i can't hit a bird it's probably the choke and the shell yeah. and you know pattern you would learn you would learn that you can you would learn like you said and maybe not a mentor maybe they need a mentor maybe there ain't one around like me i just started duck hunting four years ago i, I didn't grow up duck hunting it was deer hunting i mean yeah. that's the way it, that's the way it was you going deer hunting you know and, and then even four years ago started turkey hunting so i'm in my 40s and just learning so but that one shot can discourage them for ever coming back because for yeah. one waterfowl is cold M majority of the time it's cold you're is nasty uh, especially if you go in a marsh uh that that puff mud you yeah. never forget you will never <laughs> forget the smell of puff mud i could promise you and and then if you go out and you're missing birds you know, it doesn't take it doesn't take long, and, it, and then people get disturbed, discouraged, and quit. And and at least with this box of shells, like which we haven't really talked about in depth, but say you got two brand two shells of one brand, I'm setting up at thirty yards. Well, now I need to move back at fifty yards with the same choke and shoot again. Okay, that changes dramatically. Yes, that's right. You. You need to learn that, okay, if I'm going to this place to hunt, which is place A, well, I need a mod choke in. And if I go to my friend's house over here, spot B, which is going to have further shots, I might need a full. Yep. yep. And that shell will change for that choke. I might use brand A with a mod and brand B with a full. Yep. Or I might do two and three quarters at this one and three inch with that one. It changes dramatically. And that's why I try to stress, you know, pick a shell, try to stay with it, learn your chokes. Yep. Well, and also, too, it's funny because we'll, as duck hunters, we'll, we'll say to ourselves, oh, you know, I need like a, I need to be shooting BBs, ones or twos or threes for large ducks and fours, fives, whatever for small ducks. So we'll make that, we'll, we'll automatically make that definition. Well, I know what I need to shoot for teal. I know what I need to shoot for mallards. But 
<clears throat> depending on if you're shooting steel, bismuth, tungsten, or, or a blend or whatever, is actually how many rounds you're putting in that bird. And and then you go back and tell yourself, oh, maybe I need to go back to, you know, you're shooting twos, maybe I need to go back to threes. You know, you make a mental change that, oh, it's the size of the shell. No, it's not the size of the shell. It's, you know, as I like to tell myself, you're not a bad hunter, okay? You can make the shot. It's the, <laughs> shell, it's the shell's fault, okay? <laughs> it's the shell's fault. So and, you know, not 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 just off topic for a second um there's plenty of apps out there that also keep up with your ducks and you can put in there hey i'm at uh location a and i shot this duck on this day and you can look at it at the end of the year and say okay i shot this many ducks and then next year i shot this many ducks and you can keep track of all that stuff and that's a good thing to do and some of them apps actually let you put what brand shell you were using what distance did you have any cripples and it keeps a statistic of what you're doing and 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 like y'all said conservation we're trying to better ourselves so that is an app that pretty much everybody's got a smartphone these days that you could keep up with to better yourself yeah. Yeah. so let's say let's pull up the website here so we're going to go to shotgun shells and my internet spinning it's been working let's go to ammo there we go so let's start with pack one so three inch pack one let's talk about it so there's the picture you got boss you got brown in some kent some winchester Magra another Winchester, a Remington, and some Federals. Out of all them shells, I have never shot that Remington one. So what do, you, what do y'all find out of pack one? What do, you, what do y'all find people like the best? Well, Brody likes uh, um, our, our other, the other co-owner, Benelli's. Mm-hmm. He's found the ball sheets best out of his Benelli's. Really? Um, the other packs, yeah, but I mean, you go to Mossberg 835 and, it, and it's like uh, Kent Fastil. Um, so that was kind of our Brian. I don't know about you, but uh, I've shot the um, not out of that one, the the Super X. Um, but I just getting a chance to uh, mess around with more of them. But another one of our buddies, uh, huge, huge duck hunter, uh, I think it was the Remingtons out of that. That which is, I think, believe is the the cheapest, uh, the cheapest bo- box. Um, that pattern that pattern best out of his gun. Where it's like, where, all right, all the other boxes are more expensive, and he is. It would have been it would have been easier to see on that if I would have clicked it and made it bigger yeah. the first time. So, um, so it's so just how, it's like, like it's crazy. So in pack one here, how many shells do you get at each one? So the the this brown box right here would probably be, I'm assuming that's going to be what comes to the person, correct? Yes. Yeah, we have to find okay. out. Design All right. now. Our vintage design, but yeah, that's they'd get a pack of twenty four. It would contain three shells each. Three shells of each one out of that, and it's going to be three inch. And I think in these are all number threes. It's up the Myra over there, which is a blend of two threes. Yep. So uh, we will be going to we'll get some twelve gauge three and a half inch shells um, at some point here uh, very soon. So how I know you feel a lot of guys about like to shoot three and a half inch? How you feel about that? I'm I, I used to be a three and a half guy until I learned two and three quarters pattern better all day long. I have never had a gun that shoots three and a half inch, so I just <laughs> three three inch is just always what I've used. You know, you got some of the, some of them waterfowl guys be like. I would shoot a four inch, but they don't make it. But I'm telling you, <laughs> two and three quarters. I like two and three quarters because you don't have that kick, and you can make your next shot better. Yep. Because of the the muzzle jump. Oh yep. yeah. Yeah, it matters. So, I think it matters especially what you're shooting at, like if, like teal season. I'm probably not going to shoot the larger size. Oh yeah. no. <laughs> I want to be able to get rounds down range. Uh, right. But- but if it's general duck season and I know that I'm in a place that's got a, uh, a plethora of mallards, yeah, 
yeah, I, yeah, potentially I may go up to, to three and a half inch. I mean, I think that Mossberg Eight Thirty Five carries up to three and a half inch, and I think it just it just depends on your area. It's 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 knowledge, right? You got to get Absolutely. from what you got in the area. Um, in the Panhandle, you know, or like Kansas, you, know, right? you, know, you probably don't want to shoot them with two and three quarter inch. Um, yeah, look like somebody's got a nice Beretta on the picture here. Yeah, that was I, one of them. <laughs> I, I think that was our buddy who actually uh, shot the uh, had the high speed pattern the best. I think that was, I think that was his gun. Yeah. So on the A four hundred, it's got that kickoff butt stop. Three yeah. and a half don't feel too bad in that gun. Uh, that is a nice shooting gun. Yeah. So that that's pack one. So let's look at pack two here. Now that I know to make the picture bigger. So some heavy metal. Oh, uh, some, I tell you, them uh, heathers, heathers are, are some decent shells. Yeah. Um, I have not shot the apex. So apex. like, like you said earlier, there is no store around me that sells apex. And that is like really hard to find on websites half the time. Yeah. Uh, blind side two heavy steel, some, uh, Wicked blend there, some Winchester, and then Black Cloud. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a Black Cloud kind of guy. And you got a good mix here, right? Uh, yeah, Herders, I mean, Herders is probably what you know. You can go to Cabela's right now. Herders for probably, I don't know, Brian. What do you think? Yeah, uh, t- <laughs> uh, probably less than that. I want to say 22, 23, that, maybe something like that. Tax may be fifty. You know, you get the yeah. box a box. So, that heathers in TSS for turkey loads is pretty good too. Yeah. 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 Uh, so metal, that, Super X is pretty general. Um, that was yeah. you know, Winchester Super X. We've we've we found that a lot of people like to shoot uh, the Super X, and it's pretty readily available. So you get to compare something that maybe you've been shooting for a long time against something that maybe you've never seen before. You know, going back to that Migra, going back to that Apex or Boss. Right, I think Boss recently just finally put some am- ammunition on the shelf, going back to box one. <clears throat> but before then, you know, you had to order it online or special order it. So yeah. that they we, we kind of come up with about often offering generality to unique ammunition uh, that maybe you've never had the opportunity to shoot. I I agree. So that that is the pack two. Are y'all planning to do any two and three quarters adventures on that, or? Oh, we've got a list. <laughs> <laughs> As you can imagine, there is a we we eventually want to have every single yeah every single option possible. Um, but obviously, starting out, you know, when your resources a little bit more limited, uh-huh. you just got to go with the most popular ones possible. I can I, I can contest to that or, or I can agree to that that you know starting out especially like YouTube and podcast boy I mean it's like whew, you can get overwhelming real quick so I know I know exactly what you're saying and and I guarantee you that that ad and um do you probably fast track some things pretty quickly <laughs> it's it's getting our it's getting our name out there and um so we actually worked with uh I. I called one of their advertising guys and he actually put us uh, in touch with one of the editors um, because he liked, he liked what we had to say. And um, so we did a little bit of work with that. And then uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, a few weeks ago it, it, it popped up. So we didn't, we didn't even have, I didn't know that it was coming out. Really? So it was, it was all of a sudden we started to get some more, more foot traffic and more orders. And it was like, What's going on? And then we, and then we got the, <laughs> we got magazine in the mail. It's like, oh, sweet. So here's the the twenty gauge. Uh, that twenty gauge looks like there's more ammo in the twenty gauge one. So what's the difference between twenty and twelve gauge? I, I'm not, no. not gauge wise, but what? I don't know. What he's got that 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 picture might be might be messed up because the, the 20 gauge has still only got um eight different eight different shells in it okay um i'm not sure what 
we we've we've been messing around. We had to switch websites because uh, our, our original one didn't have or shut us down because we sold ammo. So we're getting uh, this new. This is a we've only had this website up for a month, a month that might, maybe month and a half. So it's still still very new. So we're we're trying to to work through it. And uh, Brody does uh, all of our, our website stuff. So we're it, it's listening to him go go through some of it he's like dude this website stuff is it's not it's not easy it's not just like a, a plug and play real quick so it's just it's going to take oh. some time before we get it really solidified but he's done a lot of work and he's put he's put a, a lot of hours into it it just is difficult and, and saying that with the website and ammo people don't understand how guns and ammo is so you're on pins and needles all the time. Like we were talking at the beginning offline was like with YouTube live and, and Facebook live and social media, you got to be so careful. It feels like you're on pins and needles and, and you know, just you can be up one day doing what you've been doing. And the next thing you're blocked for some reason, because something you did and you didn't really know about it. So I can understand having to change websites because the frustration i wanted to ma mail some shells to a friend of mine who i had just sitting up on the shelf basically like what y'all got i had a ton of them i said here i'm gonna i'm gonna send them to you man the headache <laughs> that goes along with that i mean i like after this week the people who sell shotgun shells online i felt sorry for them like they're Y'all, even y'all, I now appreciate all the people who ship just a little bit more just after the frustration of shipping ammo. Mm -hmm. Because there's only one company that can ship it, and that's UPS. And then you got to have a certain label on it. And you, and you can't go to the UPS store because they're a third party. You only got to go to the UPS. And then it, it was a racket. So I can only imagine which one of the three of y'all had to take on the task of shipping. And I am sorry because that, that right there had to be a headache. That's pretty yeah. compliance. Uh, compliance is definitely an interesting uh, hurdle. When yeah, well, maybe, maybe that's a good thing that he ain't on tonight because I might've brought up a touchy situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brody's done the shipping, but Christian is in charge of all of our compliance and, you know, yeah. make sure we don't get sued type of stuff. Yeah, right. we're and, I mean, there's to do everything that we possibly can to do it right. Um, and there's so many rules, too, in states and <clears throat> jurisdictions. Oh, it's frustrating. A lot of, and, it, and it varies by state, too, you know. Um, and I, I find myself kind of beating myself up because I haven't quite figured out a way to be able to reach – um, particular states that have large duck hunting communities, kind of like California, for example, mm -hmm. uh, it w within reason, because we, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, we can ship it to an FFL, but we don't want to increase the cost of the box. The point of it is to keep that box within a reasonable amount um, that a normal and average working class American can go and buy it. You know, that doesn't beat themselves up about having to buy it uh, with, with respect to what we're putting in the box. Right. So, um, that's, a, that's a hurdle in itself. That takes a lot of time. The box that you were looking at, the 20 gauge boxes you're looking at right there. I think our objective is, is that we're going to make just like the 12 gauge. We have two, two different boxes. Those are potentials that we're going to have with, with both 20 gauge boxes. Um, those are what we, we are considering including into both of those boxes. Uh, we're starting off in pairs, you know, and we've looked at, I think, I think Ryan was talking about maybe 410 or something and 16. Um, you know, we're, looking at turkey shells um we're, we're doing a bunch of research trying to figure out and pick what ammunition to put in these boxes to make it to make it uh a, a good unique product for the consumer um to give them the opportunity over to pattern different types of ammunition to figure out what works best for them so they would put more birds in the back that's the goal but uh, the compliance is definitely an interesting part <laughs> it's it's a hurdle but we're gonna we you know we we stay up late and work hard and at the end of the day you know what we're really doing is we're just going out there and shooting guns which we all love and enjoy to do 
<laughs> you know. So. Absolutely. I, man, I, I had my little boy out there earlier picking up shells out of the yard. I almost need I almost need like a magnet to go in front of the lawnmower to pick up the shell. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the air, I've seen the Air Force have something like that. The air, Force, air Force would have something like that. Well, I know I know y'all y'all military um, all Marines. Yes, yeah. Sir. Okay, so oh. y'all y'all didn't lose the uh, the fighter jet. <laughs> no, we are not the ones that lost that. I mean, you know, it's like when you're in when you I'm in South Carolina too. So when you're in South Carolina and it's like. They lost a jet in South Carolina. Like a dollar jet. Yeah. Oh man, someone's get, in trouble. <laughs> they get mad at people losing losing a single rifle um or a or a radio or so, or a piece of gear like that where it's like, all right, that you know, radios are expensive and you right or in, in, like a gas mask or and you're like, Hey, it's a you know, a few hundred bucks and it's like, all right, well, yeah, you're screwed. You're getting paid <laughs> for it. This guy yeah, lost I, the most advanced airplane in the entire world <laughs> i have questions but that's a that's another tenfold kind of uh, <laughs> podcast but i i've i did 11 years as a volunteer fire department in 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 lancaster and then i did seven and a half years at, with ems so y'all get a couple days extra to hunt per year because y'all military that us first responders don't get. So I'm a little salty about that. So I'm just going, <laughs> I'm just going to let y'all know that, uh, you know, I did, I did time too to at a, at a free. So when the state comes out with uh military days, I, I get a little salty. I'm like, look at all this time I did for free. So, hey, RD, you can come with us. Any, any veterans hunt you want. <laughs> we will happily <laughs> take you. And that's, I thought the, you could... Hey, you know, I'm going to wrap this back to, uh, cause this goes into a conversation me and Ryan were having not too long ago. Um, cause Ryan kind of deals a lot with our outreach and we were talking, how can we get more involved in like hunter safety and guides and just, just in the public. And so <clears throat> we were talking about, we'd love to get to a point to be able to, and maybe if somebody's listening to this podcast, you can help us out, reach out to pattern pros, but we'd love to get to a point where, um, we're, we're hosting or including, you know, patterning practices in youth hunting or in, uh, hunter safety courses. Right. Because, you know, hunter safety course, Ryan, you were talking about it you know, uh, on the last podcast that we were doing. You didn't, you didn't learn the ins and outs of patterning a shotgun during a hunter safety course, but you learned about basic weapons handling, safety handling. Uh, and that's almost as equally as important if you think about it. So in the middle part of South Carolina, there is a range it's uh DNR DNR owns it. It's uh the watery range. And the other day I was down there sh shooting some skeet, and there had to be like 20 or 30 guys out there that had tents up. And when I got there, I was like, What's going on? His and the 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 DNR guy who over it, he was like, Yeah, there that's a, a learning tool for the teachers. They're bringing back teaching a lot of shotguns in the schools and all these teachers are now training to be able to take that class and and teach the students so That's i was awesome. like man they they i would love to see it i mean i, I think it's awesome yeah so it, you get all these other things that you're taught about and all the safety which obviously is extremely important and it's just that patterning is not hit on and so if we can get it into that platform to make people understand the importance of patterning a shotgun from the very infancy of their hunting careers now it becomes part of everything that they do for the rest of their hunting careers you're like oh yeah you That's pattern right. a shotgun and yep. you're like all right you do it for everything um you do it for you do it for ducks you do it for dove you do it for turkey and you know you do it for wood deer for buckshot uh, and it would take such a little amount of time to do that in the hunter safety that you give each student a single shell and you shoot it at say 30 yards just to give it a little bit farther away, just to see that holes, the different holes in your pattern. And people will start to understand from the get go that it's not, yeah, hey, it shoots BBs, but it's not perfect. It's not, it's not going to be in a perfect circle. 
It's not all going to be de- directly in center. Every gun's going to be different. And if you start that from the beginning, it will forever change how we hunt and how how successful you are, how successful your kids are, and potentially all of those birds to come back into the breeding population to give us ultimately more things to hunt. And the tools. Absolutely. The basic tools. Like <clears throat> – like kind of already like you were saying uh i didn't grow up um duck hunting because i'm from the south we didn't have a large duck population but i did deer hunt and running dogs from where i was from was a very popular thing to do it's not allowed in a lot of places but where i'm from it was and so i kind of learned um how to lead in a full sprint that deer's crossing crossing that field you 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 know you gotta lead them sometimes so i learned early on about how to about shot placement but when you're going out and patterning a shotgun, I never learned that you might want to get um, a target big enough to be able to actually see all of your all of your rounds impact paper. You know, you go and get Absolutely. when <clears throat> early on when I was shooting shotguns, I used to go take a cereal box and I used to cut the front face of a king size or a family size cereal box, and then I'd have two targets. You know, <laughs> and I would just shoot, no. try to shoot right in the middle of that cereal box, but how many pellets didn't hit that target that I wasn't accounted for? So Absolutely. I, and I'm one of them. And I'll say it on this live. If you go back and look at the beginning of my channel, I was using, I think it was a, a piece of paper. I think it was like 15 by 18. I wasn't getting a full 30 inch circle. So I learned also, hey, I need to go bigger. And now all my videos are 30 inch circles. So you even, got, you even got, though I've been shooting shotguns my whole life, dove hunting, I learned so much and grew as a channel also by pattern. And they, like you said, Ryan, dove hunting, you know, they make seven and a half, eights and nines. Yep. And it's so much different. You know, you learn with even doves and skeet. Hey, there's a hole in this pattern that I'm shooting Maybe if I went from an eight to a seven and a half, dramatically changes the way that gun acts. And 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 that goes back to almost like what you said. It needs to be in hunter education because if you never told anybody the the difference between a seven and a half and an eight BB, which isn't much, but pellet wise it's a lot, that's a that's something that people need to learn. And you don't learn that unless you go out and start wasting some shells. Oh, absolutely. It's yeah, just the amount of knowledge that we've all gained um, just really this past year after starting to look at different shells and different chokes and putting it on paper. And it, and you start to you start to care about it more. Yeah. And it's been a really cool experience. And like uh, Christian was here. Uh, er- earlier this year, I want to say it was in, back in February, and we went and did some shooting. Um, and we've got our, our targets are I can't I mean they're three and a half by four feet. I four uh, somewhere they're 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 huge. So you do get to see the full really the full spectrum of it. And but it was fun like you know, so we we shot all these targets and then we put them put them on my kitchen island. And you know you got spent you do got to spend a little bit of time because you're sitting there and. I would literally just start counting. I had a little Sharpie and I was, all right, there's first hole, there's second. And you start counting and then you can look up online for, you know, for three inch number threes, there's a, approximately for steel, there's approximately this many in that shell. Now they're, they, they may vary a little bit, but on average, you, you can find a, about how many are in each one. So you start counting, you're like, hey, what's this percentage? Uh, and Brody did a, a test earlier this year with two different ammos. And even at 20 yards, there was, you know, a 15, 20 pellet difference. And then all at 40 yards, which you have, you know, you, all right, hey, your first shot's at 20, but you're shooting a teal that are going, you know, Mach 10. And by the <laughs> time, by the time you, you swing on them again, they may, they might be at 40 yards. Yeah, and now he start to see a, a full, like, you know, 40 pellet difference. That are that is in that circle. You're like that is a lot because it, you know, you obviously want to get more than one BB into that bird, but sometimes that's all it takes. And you you go you walk up to a duck and you're like, it doesn't look like this. It looked like it just kind of fell over dead. 
you know, like they had just the right BB at the right spot and makes a big difference. I mean, you know? yeah, <clears throat> teal, teal, and uh, smaller ducks like to fly in, in, in clusters. And how excited are you when you get a double? You know what I mean? <laughs> when you see, when you drop two birds, I think Ryan shot a, a, a double once, and it, it, it's just just in the blind. It's just energetic, super energetic. But I mean, it was just right shot placement. You yeah. know, it just happened to be that right shell at that right moment, that right yardage. Um, and and it's just super exciting to see how it changed, how your hunting game changes whenever you get more familiarized. It's cool. So man. let me pull up the website back again. So you were talking about papers. So there's two things on the website that I want to talk about. First one is just a paper. So y'all are providing 25 pieces of paper, which when I first thought about it, I'm like, well, they only came with 24 shells. But then I like the explanation that comes down here with it. You're putting one more paper in it, and there's a reason why correct yes so every every gun is going to shoot it it's i, I can't remember the, the technical term brody's our, our our gun nut um but certain guns will shoot not a certain direction they may they may favor left they may favor like my 870 shoots high and so that's to understand where the center of your pattern is actually going to be yeah your point of placement yep and point of aim Right, and and I've I I noticed that. So in the in the chat here, I don't think y'all can see the chats, but um, Keith from Salt Creek, I was talking to him earlier, and um, he he sent me some TSS, and I was shooting it, and I shot it with a, a Super Black Eagle, one, and the first shot that I shot was high, like I I didn't I didn't know I never shot the gun. So basically, like what you said, I I shot high because I didn't know what that gun was going to do. Yeah, and I so, found that's interesting because that's just another contributing story about them super black eagles. I've we've talked to a bunch of people about it's a it's a popular popular shotgun in the Parkock community, and I've heard more stories about individuals shooting high. So that's just an example of of knowing what you're shooting, you know, because it may make the difference. As our counterpart likes to say, you can aim at the feet and slap it in the lips. It may make the big difference for you. <laughs> yeah, and, and you y'all were just talking about, you know, pellet counts, and he commented on there too that says, you know, it's not uncommon to see a 16th of an ounce variance difference in, in shales. You know, there's not that machine that's counting them pellets is not counting them one, two, three. You know, they're just measuring them and dropping them in. So, you know, there could be a difference between five to 20 pellets sometimes in a shell. And that could make a difference on hitting a bird or not hitting a bird. That's right. Yep. So, y'all having paper, and, and also commenting on this paper, I buy a big roll of brown paper, but there is absolutely one store in my town that sells paper big enough to do a 30 inch circle. There's plenty of places in town that sells brown paper, but you can't get a 30 inch circle out of it. So it is sometimes in stock. Sometimes it ain't in stock. Majority of the times it ain't. Yep. So you can get the paper right here off the website and ship it to you when you, when you order in it, because like you said, you know, a lot of towns don't have. Right stores around to get brown paper yeah here in the panhandle there's not the first per there's not the first store that's got it so and I, even if order. even if you do find it you're gonna have to buy it probably in in larger oh. amount oh we lost ryan i bet yeah. i bet his i bet his ipad died he yeah. was on it he said i think i got 15 percent. not ryan <laughs> it didn't make it <laughs> yeah i think he's gonna hop on hop, hop back on as soon as he gets uh Gets a charger to it, but um, so no. The our, other think, right. Oh, go ahead. No, I mean here in the Panhandle, in order for me to be able to buy um, a big enough sheet of paper, I got to travel two hours, two and a half hours north. Yeah, and I got to buy bulk, which um, was another reason why we wanted to secure um, the paper for for consumers to put it on the website was because um, 
I know, we realized how hard it is to actually get get a big enough surface to be able to actually pattern your shotgun with. And that was a that was an interesting statistic too. Yeah, I, 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 as soon as I saw it, and I'm like, well, that's a pretty good design or, or idea because I can't, you can't um, just go down to Walmart. Welcome back. Your battery die. Yeah, I thought the iPad was charged <laughs> earlier, but apparently someone decided to not have it fully plugged in. Uh, my kids do that all the time. I walk by and the tablet would be dead. And I'm like, tablet's dead. Yeah, dad, I know. I'm like, do you think it's just going to magically charge? <laughs> I mean, if you know it's dead, plug it in. But, you know, kids, don't. They, I don't understand them sometimes. They don't get it. You know, the, the older I get, the, the more I want to apologize to my parents. Uh, because I'm like, was I like this when I was a kid? You were exactly like it, Mama. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I want to apologize to my mother more often if if I acted like that. <laughs> but I got up on the website now this circle device, and yeah, if yeah. you if you go back on some of my videos, maybe a month ago. I was drawing a circle with a tape measure. I'll take tape measure, do 30 inches, 30 inches in a, and then just magically draw a circle with a, a Sharpie. And, you know, I'd look at some of the videos and I'm like, that is not a circle. That is terrible. Like you're putting this on YouTube and you can't even draw a circle. It looks like you're shooting an egg. And, and I, I never thought about making a, a, a I made a template. So I do have a template now. I took a cardboard, a big 30-inch cardboard that I keep. And I'm like, after seeing this, after it came out in the article, I'm like, well, you know, that's only 15 inches. And it's a whole lot smaller than my 30-inch piece of cardboard that I'm keeping around to make a template out of. And I I don't remember. If, so with their 3D printed, and I can't remember if he had adjusted it yet, where he was going to actually put a, a smaller one in there to create a uh a 10 inch circle it's gonna be the, the same thing so it'll you'll have you know so you a 30 inch it. circle and then a 10 inch circle to actually give That's you a right. better um just a better view of it you're like all right hey it was at the at that in that 10 inches i've got this many and then on the larger scale you've got this many so it'll just give you a little bit uh better idea of the of the smaller picture as well i mean that's hey, as well, soon as i saw that i was like why didn't I think about that? I mean, here I am, you know, 3D world, we 3D print everything now. And it's just like, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. I mean, I think it's just pure, let's get real here. Let's look at it. We, we're, we're, all of all the products we're creating is because we're truly lazy. Right. <laughs> hey, I, spend, we want to, we don't want to spend as much money. We don't want to spend a lot of money and we don't want to work real hard. My, so, my wife my wife says it's not lazy it's efficiency <laughs> yeah that's I'm like, a, that's i'm like that's you call it whatever crazy. you want to call it it's lazy <laughs> that's right uh, so that little tool we we really enjoyed the process and and i mean you you ought to hear the stories about the process of trying to figure out the right thing to to make to be able to make the diameters of those circles uh because there's a lot of trial and error right uh but we finally created something that you can just roll up put in your pocket you can put in your pocket you know that that lightens the load instead of you having like you were saying carrying around that big 30 inch disc yeah yeah so anything new i know we talked about some some stuff that y'all are questioning like is there is there anything new like coming out that you want to hit on or there, yep. uh, there might be some some stuff coming out uh, January time frame for maybe something a little bit bigger. Yep. All right, so there you go. Y'all heard it first. Might have to have them on come February, and then after. maybe maybe something, uh, maybe something next summer that for something you know a little bit smaller. Who knows? Mm. Yeah, we've got some. Stuff. We've got some cool stuff in the works, and. Uh, it's it's been i'll tell you what it's been a lot more work than than we imagined uh at first it was like hey you know what we'll just buy some jockey shells we'll throw them in a box and people buy them it's gonna be awesome and then it's like well all right there might be more to it than that 
Um, but no, we want to put this idea into as many facets of hunting as, as we possibly can. Um, because mm -hmm. it, it's only going to make everyone a, a, not only a more ethical hunter, but a more efficient hunter. And I, I how many times have, have you shot at something and you're like, there is no way I missed that. Well, <laughs> you may not. Oh, I, say that that. I say that all the time. And then my buddy be like, you literally shot behind it. The wall was 40 feet behind it. <laughs> So we got some yeah. we got some some cool stuff coming up. So you just uh well the ammunition market, ammunition market is huge, as we all know. It's just a huge, big bro. There's so many products out there. So I mean, yeah, we can throw a bunch of stuff into a box and, and, and be able to sell it, but how much work did you actually put into in there to determine it? So that's we have pre-selected boxes that we're working on and uh it's gonna be really exciting, especially by the time summer next year. Um but we we're putting in the work we're trying to get the data we're trying to figure out the polls what the public likes to see and what they like to shoot um so you know we've got a lot of exciting things it's a lot of work like ryan was saying but we've got a lot of exciting things that are we're working on currently um each one of us have a checklist <laughs> of ammunition that we want to work through uh and like i just in shotguns too because you know it matters what you're shooting so like Ryan laughing at me earlier today because uh, I may or may not have went and bought another shotgun. Have told my wife about that. <laughs> I know, but uh, you know it's all for it's all for research, is what I like to say. So, <laughs> so oh, I, I use that excuse. I use that excuse all the time, man. You know, it's a write -off. I come home and the wife wants to know what'd you buy, and when I say nothing, okay, no, really, I'm like, no, I didn't buy nothing this time. I mean, she don't even believe me anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know, they matter. always. They always say you, you can't go wrong with the three B's, so. Bullets, beans, and bandages? <laughs> yeah, bullets, beans, and bandages, yeah. Nah, <laughs> so I, for, Marine, I right forget, y'all military, you know the three B's, browning, beretta, benelli. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, I, 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 can, I can go along with that. I mean, y'all, I, I don't know, I don't know the deal with crayons and stuff, but I always hear military people talking about eating crayons, so I well, don't know. That's the Marine Corps. That's uh, we're a we're a special <laughs> special group of individuals. Um, yeah, I don't know how else to say that. With uh, we'll just leave it special. Hey, uh, I, I told you I was firing EMS, and uh, we're all. It, it, you might be shooting a gun in overseas, but the same crazy people are on the EMS and fire. So I'm a firefighter <laughs> oh. now, so I see it. I see it just about every day. <laughs> yep. that's right yeah I, it takes funny. it takes special people to do all of it so i, I think that's it, we're probably all the same it's just we're all in this strange category over here so oh absolutely oh, oh the communities are not much different i can tell you right now i mean christian I, christian's the smarter one though christian got away from the working for the government i got 13 more years i wouldn't say that no, I guess, yeah, I guess you're a contractor for the government now, so. <laughs> so, so that's how it works. You work for the government, then you go contract and you make twice as much. Yes. <laughs> he, 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 he has no comment. I answered for him. There was, <laughs> it, like, uh, I'm sorry, you're bringing that, 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 that <laughs> So we, we done talked about shells and pattern. So what's your favorite duck and maybe what steak? Spoonie. Christian Christian likes the spoonies. I'm all about. I, I'll shoot. We, we had so yep. many spoonies in in California. I yeah. I, I had a, a older buddy. He always gave me a hard time about it. But I'm like, you know what? They're just as fun to shoot as an expert. But for me, my favorite my favorite duck is probably is widgeon. I love I love a widgeon. They're just they the way they work, the way they talk. The way they look, everything, everything about it. Those are some um, pretty birds for sure. And didn't get a whole lot always in Southern California. Every now and then we get we get a good little flight of them. Um, we got to see more pintail than the average hunter will see in maybe in 
their lifetime if they don't go to a, a, an area like that. Like, a, I mean, there was times where we'd see a, over a thousand easy in a single hunt. I mean, we had a day. Me a, thousand and in a, a thousand in a single hunt and you move to a state of South Carolina where you don't see a thousand in a whole year. No, God, no, no, not, not, not even not... go to the zoo, <laughs> but there was a day me and Christian easily could have killed 50. I mean, it was yeah. probably 25 mile hour winds and they were just going right over us. We'd already killed our one and it was like, all right, well, I'm just going to stare at that. And well, I probably, cool. I probably have to redact my answer and I probably have to say, um, I think that, that, that. I do love the way that Spoonies look. That's what that's what they I like the Daffy Deal Bill. But uh um or Daffy Duck Bill, but uh cinnamon teal. I mean, Ryan, we had the opportunity to shoot as many cinnamon teal, which a lot of people don't ever get that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um and we had a plethora. I mean, it was a, almost an annoyance in Southern California. I uh, don't show it off. We we already saw it up there. Show <laughs> off. <laughs> I mean that was pretty- that was Christian's first two ducks. Great cinnamon. That's right. That's right. I mean, there's really only like really two like two places: California and what a little bit of Louisiana. Uh, no, I don't think Louisiana's got it's a uh, uh, yeah. Utah and Texas. There was the one shot last year in uh, in they, North Carolina, but it won, and we just thought to ourselves, they get lost. But I mean, we saw them. <laughs> we saw them a lot. We saw them all the time. It was. It, I mean, it never got old. They're always, I mean, because especially by the time they got that far south, even after the first two or three weeks, they were, they were just, they were beautiful. I mean, just, there's no other way to put it. They were just unbelievably looking birds. My friend commented, he, he's, he, he is out in California a little bit. He was like, my, my fellow California brothers. And then he, he's like, he, he's talking about your mustache. He was like, that mustache. Well, it makes me a better. It makes me a better firefighter. <laughs> yeah, he see some of us. Well, I, I done, I done, I done gave up my time. But you know, that's what we always said. You can't. A real man can't have a a much a much a big beard, whatever, because you know our SCBAs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh lord! I, 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 I'm I thinking maybe back. Christian hears that sometimes. Yeah. Let me tell you, I'm done with the days of, of wearing a mask. Let me tell you that much. No more yeah. mask. <laughs> never again. Never again. I had to shave every day for eight years. I probably won't ever shave again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've been on about almost an hour and a half. So where can people find y'all at on online? PatternProsUSA.com. That's right. And then we have Instagram, just I think it's just Pattern Pros and uh, Facebook, same thing. Yep. So they can follow follow along. Yep. Yo, yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe our our numbers could probably be found, um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, uh, somewhere on the website. Uh, I got a call a few weeks ago from it a guy is. from. Uh, I from see it Oregon. down on the bottom. It says support. Um, hopefully Christian gets all the support questions, but <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a, I got a call from a guy in, in Oregon a few weeks ago and he was trying to figure something out on there and just about getting a set of targets. And so, I mean, it was just great to, to hear from someone who's supporting us and then, uh, wanting to better themselves and just, and then got to talk just a little bit of duck hunting. So we could sit there and BS duck hunting all day i mean that's if i could duck on every single day i i would well i mean you got to be good at bs and duck hunt when you live in south carolina because you sure ain't talking about ducks oh no no <laughs> no because yeah. before remember, me and ryan was talking before you joined christian and he was like so did you go till hunting i'm like if, if or did or were you online when we said that i'm like do you seriously want to call that till hunting? I went and watched a sunrise. <laughs> I like my sunrise. I put waders on and I got up really early. That's about no. it. It's like dove season prepare, prepares the waterfowl hunter for hunting. Till season prepares you for waterfowl season. You're getting everything together and you go see a sunrise. <laughs> That's right. With That's mosquitoes. 
But the moment that you got ducks flying in, you get hooked. There is yep. not something else. I mean, we've we have been mule deer hunting, we've been elk hunting, turkey hunting. I mean, whitetail. I mean, we we've, we've between the three of us, uh, even together. Uh, Ryan got us lost in California one time trying to track down some mule deer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we've gotten a, we've we've gotten some good experience of hunting big game. Now, and, but nothing's like duck hunting. I mean, now, wait a minute. Y'all are all supposed to be trained individuals to be able to look at the star and the moon and, and drop that, a piece to right. drop a piece of grass and be like, <laughs> we're heading north. Ryan will no. tell you that he knew exactly where we were, I, but he was the only one. I was on, <laughs> yeah, because I was the only one who had the map on Onyx. I knew exactly where we were at. We had scaled the side of a dry waterfall. waterfall. And it was like, oh, okay. And then on the way back, it was like, that's that's not the easiest. I don't know if we can get down that. So it was like, or we'll go up and around. But it was so thick and so dry, like we couldn't, you could not go through it. Like we we'd have, we needed a, a, a machete, uh, probably like <laughs> on steroids or, or I don't know. And finally, Christian was like, "Dude, let's just." let's just go he's like i'll go i think him our other buddy brad was like i'll go first and i was just like i was smoked i was yeah. like all right whatever <laughs> let's let's go yeah, well, we were only a mile and a half maybe two miles from the from the truck and it was just like i mean we we're on the same trail we were on our, i mean there's only one way out like it's a creek it's a, it's a dry creek bed so it's not like we got turned around or anything it was just we were stuck and then finally just the process of of picking your spots to jump down because it was all like loose shale and you know christian almost died like whatever no big deal uh, well he, he thought he was gonna die well um, we fell off this waterfall let's get real there was no other way i know we, we slid we slid down we but i know what christian <laughs> i know what christian looks like when he thinks he's gonna die <laughs> i i stared Where, into did, his soul that day did did he scream like a little girl no no he didn't but i think okay. he probably had he had some choice words afterwards <laughs> um he said them in my direction but he wasn't necessarily he wasn't saying them at me i think he was just like like yeah it was no. just just no, it was just right. anger and, and just that that split second coming out I thought I thought it was funny, but yeah, it is funny. Like the way you're talking, you know, that's how that's how it is when you're hunting waterfowl. You, you know, it's not always about the ducks. I mean, you could go out anywhere and shoot probably ducks, a ton of ducks. It's the memories. And like my friend that was online, I mean, we we go together a lot, and like we we'll talk about some of the craziest stuff. And like like we were walking through the marsh, and I stepped and went knee deep. Yeah, and like he had to come save me. Like <laughs> I, here I am, one leg, one leg all the way down, and the other one all the way up, and I was just stuck in mud. I mean, I, it was done. I, yep. I think the only way I could have got out by myself was uh come out my waders. But yep. uh, he he said he, he's still here. But you know, it's them crazy them crazy moments. And and me, me and him and a couple other guys went to this one one hunt. And it's like a mile and a half walk in, mile and a half walk out. But down going is all downhill. Coming back was uphill. And it was like 30 degrees that morning, but like 75 that afternoon. Cause you know, here in South Carolina, we see all the all the summers and falls all in one day sometimes. And like everybody else took their tennis shoes and they took their waders off to walk back. Here I am. I didn't bring my tennis shoes Ooh. and I had to walk back in my waders. Ooh. And I thought I died two or three times. Yep. And then, <laughs> then we get back to the gate. There's the game wardens. No. Oh. And, 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 and most of the game wardens around here, I know really good are really good friends. And I'm like, I start handling my gun. I'm like, here's my gun. I start stripping my clothes off because, I mean, I am in full sweat mode. <laughs> and I am coming out of them waders. I'm coming out of them um, thermals that I had on. And the next thing I know, here I am with no shirt on, 
and you know <laughs> one of your buddies are going to take a picture. Oh, uh, yeah. and yeah, and you know it's like I don't even know what was going on, but it, yep. you know it's the memories. That's that's what that's what hunting is really about is the memories. Oh, we got memories. Oh yeah, we've got all kinds of um, probably mostly inappropriate stories, <laughs> but we've 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 had some just some of those times that you're like, I will never, will never forget that. And it was like, wasn't even about most of the time. It wasn't about shooting a duck, shooting at ducks. It was mostly when nothing else was going on. And it was just like, well, that was really stupid, but you're like, that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and, I, I, I agree. And, and my buddy here, I'm like, Hey, is it snack time yet? Cause I'm hungry. Oh what, yeah. What, Christian's, what, all, Christian's all about the snacks. What, about what we got to eat. He's like, dude, you done ate all your snacks. I mean, you, you're out. What yeah. do you What did you bring? Coffee? I don't want no coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ryan's Ryan is is the is the best person for snacks because he always has the good stuff. And every single time, he'll bring this bag of beef jerky, and me and Brody will sneak around while he's not paying attention, steal it out of his bag. <laughs> yeah, I'm always left with the, the crumbs. I like <laughs> I'll, I open the bag and I'll eat it and I try and hide it. But it's like, I swear, I don't even buy the beef jerky. I just all of a sudden have it. I think that like my wife will like buy it. You're like, oh, you're going to need, you know, beef jerky is a great hunting snack, which obviously it is. But then I'm like, all right, well, I'll, I'll get to enjoy a handful. And then that's going to, it's just going to be gone. And I don't even think they could give me the worst flavor in the world, but I feel like they just eat it just to just be, just because they think it's funny. <laughs> oh, it's pretty. Yeah, that's just that's how it is. And it could be. Ain't none ain't none of you uh, took no shells out of the other person's gun either, have you? No, no, that, that we haven't messed with. I, I think we, we I guess when it's time time for shooting stuff, we are that's when we're 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 serious about it. But it's like everything in between is who knows what's gonna happen. <laughs> oh well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, if back, I, I, I definitely <laughs> when Brody, Brody would put his his duck bag right next to me, and if he's got shells and then belt loops, and ducks are flying, and I'm out, you know, Brody is definitely <laughs> out for. <laughs> I'm reaching down and grabbing what he's got in that belt loop. That's a hundred percent sure. Yeah. So my buddy, my buddy, be like, "Hey, I got a pick of that. Like that that picture is dead." There, there's like statue of limitations. I mean, it can only <laughs> circulate for so long, and then it's got to go. It's got to go hide, right? Yeah, we've got so, we've got right. a few pictures like that. <laughs> they have a canvas of me climbing out. <laughs> I was shirtless, and we had. Uh, you were more than shirtless, but yeah, we'll there that. was a very story of you know being able to identify your duck before shooting because we could have sworn this was a sea duck that flew into our pond and uh and it was in season and we i shot it and it's sitting there floating in the middle of the pond and <laughs> as a good hunter i went i 100 percent was going to get my harvest and uh this pond rd was not it was a weird scenario it was in the middle of the city and it's it not clean it was not clean it was basically a it was homeless person's pool in <laughs> january i'm we don't have a fishing pole or a way to get this duck no raft so I stripped down to my undergarments and, <laughs> and I, was, I found this couch, I found a couch cushion, which I probably shouldn't have grabbed, but I found a couch cushion and I thought, <laughs> you know, a good plan to float on this couch cushion out there and get that bird. So I get about, I don't know, Ryan, what do you think? 15 feet what? away and that couch cushion just completely submerged. No, you got farther water, out there than I thought you would. You probably got 20 yards off the bank and the bird, you <laughs> And the bird was maybe 40, maybe 45 yards out there. So I was like, oh, he's got most of the way out there. And then he jumped off and I was like, oh, he'll just, he'll just continue out there. And then he realized this water is way too cold for this and yeah. turned around. And then he was man enough to where he would, like, he went for a second attempt and he only made it maybe 10 yards this time. That and then it was like, um, no. This is not happening. And I am bent over crying my eyes out laughing at, at what is in, unfolding in front of me. And I somehow was able to like halfway stand up and snap a picture 
as he is coming out of the water and just water just dripping down his face. Um, and they end up going to a, a friend's house, uh, close, somewhat close by and get a fishing pole. And I had, uh, I had my kid with me and that was her, that was her first duck hunt. She was not, she was not on that side of the pond. She was on the other side with the pond with Brody. So she didn't have to witness this. Um, and they call me like 30 minutes later and they're like, dude, it was a common merganser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, merganser. Uh, oh, merganser. I, that's my story for harvesting a merganser. I almost died that day. Or I thought I was. Hey, you, you were talking about that nasty, that, that tight pond. We go out to Real Foot Lake in Tennessee. And in between Real Foot Lake and the Mississippi is a little teeny dirt road. And you can go down the dirt road and, and go look at the Mississippi. But in between Real Foot Lake and Mississippi River is a um, city, county, uh, what would you call it, a, 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 a poop station. You know, the, the, the pond <laughs> yep. with the poop, and it's got the motors turning around out there. And you go by, and you look at it, and there's ducks out there on that water. Just, yeah. just swimming around on that water, and you're like, wait a minute. Now, you yeah. know that's probably the same ducks that we're shooting that's flying over <laughs> real quick, which ain't but like 10 miles away, if that. And it's like. Um, yep. Our like, favorite place to our favorite place to duck yep. hunt on, on base uh, was maybe at most half a mile uh, from that same kind of station. And you know that they came off that because you could watch them just about get off the water and they were coming your way. And we shot plenty of ducks that came <laughs> straight off of that. And it's just one of those things you just kind of put put to the side of your mind. You're like, I know where it came from, but we're just going to pretend like that's not where they came from at all. <laughs> well, how, yeah, about, we'll how about the times that we hunted the Salton Sea? Um, the Salton Sea, I mean, it during the middle of the day, it does not smell the greatest. You know? um, yeah, <laughs> not, no, it's a giant body of water just about Mexico, and it's – uh it's nasty. It's, it's and, it, and my buddy that, that was on here, we, we've been in that puff marsh. And I mean, sometimes when we kayak paddling out hunting and you get that stuff on you and it, it you almost lose your stomach sometimes. It's yeah, like, it ain't like, I, like, I don't know what that, if they made that in a candle, that would be one of them <laughs> gag gifts that you would send somebody. That's a great idea. That's a good idea. No, it is not a great idea. That is a horrible smell. Maybe yeah, not yeah, but it's not for you. It's for your friend, so it's gonna be hilarious. Yeah. Maybe that's what we should try. Maybe we should come out with a, a lot of candles. And just call one of them like the coop. Other yeah, like the that'd be great. We'll send it. We'll send it to. We won't even send it to Brody. Just when we go to his house, we'll bring it, and then when he's like outside, we'll light it. <laughs> the Maganzer Marsh scent. Oh, <laughs> Oh man, that would be. Amazing. I just want to throw up just about thinking about it. <laughs> you know, we have. All right, we so where where can people find y'all next? Are y'all going to any shows? Um, That's where y'all gonna be? Where y'all going? The G and H decoy, uh, like Oklahoma waterfowl festival this weekend in Henrietta, Oklahoma. So September twenty third. And uh, so Christian and I are flying down to to Brody's house there in in Tulsa, and so just just a one day event, but um, we'll be there all day. So yeah, they'll be signing they'll from... be signing autographs. So bring your DU that's, magazine, that's get, get them to sign the magazine before they get rich and famous. Yeah, that's right. And Ryan moves out of South Carolina to duck hunt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's 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 have at it. I'm ready to to shoot more than like three wood ducks in a season. <laughs> let, me, let me leave it open too for anybody who who happen to be listening. Um, if you've got an event that might be a good fit for us in, in a different state, let us know. Um, you can contact us <clears throat> Instagram, one of the social media outlets, or the website through the support. Um, we've got a co we've got another show coming up after this event this weekend um, that we're heading out to. Brian, what was that? It's in Oklahoma too. Um, duck. What is what is oh, this? Oh, the event? doc, the Doctor Duck. Yeah, Dr. that duck. one's in, I, that I, one's in uh, October. Yeah, we're, we're make a show face on that one. But uh, we we love coming to these 
I mean, you got to think it's just a bunch of duck hunters that are getting together and hosting an event. I mean, it's a good time every time. So October the 7th in the great state of South Carolina, it will be that summerton duck festival. There you go. There we go. Oh, I hadn't, I hadn't actually, I hadn't heard of that one. That's a I summer haven't either. Summer. And this is not the first year. It's like a big festival. It's Summerton Duck Fest. I wonder if I can pull it up. And you know, Summerton is uh just I think to a little bit to the right of Sumter, Santee kind of area. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Santee area is only about an hour, it's only an hour from me. Um, but yeah. I'm still newer to South Carolina. <laughs> So here, let's see. Let's pull it up. All right. So that's it right there. The the duck capital of South Carolina. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know about that one, but <laughs> so this is. It says it's the. It's going to be its eighth year held in. Where is that? Isn't that well? That might be closer to you than Clarendon County. Uh, yeah, that's closer sure. to you, ain't it? Uh, yeah, Manning. Manning. Yeah, that's what I thought. Manning. Uh, the it would be the right side of uh, yeah, is that is that like Lake Marion? Yeah, this right Santee there. right here. So yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's probably an hour and a half, no more than two hours for me. Yeah, so they're gonna have duck calling. I don't know nothing about it. I got it on my calendar. I'm going. I have absolutely no idea. Idea, idea. That's some southern talk. <laughs> There I have go. no idea what what's going to happen, but you know here here it is. I'm just going to go and look yeah. for myself for the first time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's and then, you know maybe that might not be too far from you. No, I may have half a look at that one. John C. The third landing. Not sure where that's at. Summer Conduct Fest. I'll have to yeah. look that one up. The duck capital of South Carolina. I don't. I didn't know there was such a thing. I don't. You know, some of them old timers talk about Santee and Delta East and West. Maybe I've heard so. it used to be my my wife's one of my wife's uncles. See, he used to talk about it, and he said there used to be all kinds of ducks. I mean, and I think a lot of it. There's so much private land now, mm-hmm. um, and they. I mean, I know some of those places. They they still hammer ducks and they're like quality ducks. Yeah, and uh, it, it's just not. I think a yeah, lot of the plantations a, they're not what they used to be. They're more it's uh, they use it for more for hunting and than a lot of and, uh I mean good on them, but it's hard it's you know, it just makes it harder for the rest of us. For the rest of us. Yeah. That's a that's a different day, a different topic, right? Yeah, oh yeah. So all right, well, I think I covered everything that I had on my list to talk about. So Anything else y'all, y'all want to say before we close out for tonight? Yeah, if anybody's got any questions for us or have any uh, recommendations for shells or opportunities to be able to host or come to one of these events or uh, or even forgot, um, you know, reach out to us. We, we're just, <clears throat> we're normal, average hunters uh, who are out there trying to start the communication, just really start the conversation, I should say, uh, about safely hunting and familiarizing yourself with your weapons so yeah i mean just reach out to us we're all open um we all have access to our our inlets whether it's the support email the the phone or the instagram but uh yeah we'd love to have a conversation absolutely all right well i appreciate y'all coming on and uh i like you said like i said earlier i think what y'all got going on is a good thing that way people can uh buy some ammo try different brand out see what works good for their shotgun and move to the other brand instead of buying boxes and boxes so kudos to that i can't wait to see what's coming i'd like to see something for you know turkey and 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 deer maybe so yeah yeah oh yeah that's been a topic <laughs> of our so maybe it's- maybe 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 this time next year we'll have to reconvene and uh see what's new out there absolutely Absolutely. And then, well, I appreciate the next every South Carolina. We'll have to stop by and, and shoot some guns with you. I mean, that's been an awesome experience. Oh. I appreciate you having us. Oh yeah, I pulled the old clay shooter out. We'll, we'll throw some. There we go. There we go. 
might not be no ducks around here, but we can we can we can throw some clay pigeons. That's all right. I like shooting clay. And then we might get it on video all the times you miss. <laughs> well, no, we'll do it like the professionals do. So we'll cut out all the misses. And Absolutely, make, like I make it you hit it every single time. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I talk about that a lot of times. You know, other states that have ducks, like I don't know, out out in the middle flyway. You know, they can they they all shoot and they miss, but they got so many other ducks that they can make good quality. You come to South Carolina where you get the chance of shooting like at two birds. And that's it. Mm-hmm. You know, some days is just it's no recording. A lot of days <laughs> it's just sunrise. Yeah. Yep. So, all right. Well, I appreciate it. Well, um, thanks, I appreciate RDS everybody um, watching this. Share it. Um, get their word out for the, the, these guys. And uh, I'll, I'll catch y'all next time. Awesome. Thanks, RD.